Hello and welcome to New Frontiers on CCTV International. I'm Ji Xiaojun in Beijing, and today we're continuing with our major series all about Chinese kung fu. Way back in the Sui Dynasty, in 606 AD to be precise, Emperor Yangdi introduced something called the Keju system. Well, Keju was the imperial examination used in feudal times to select officials from among the intellectuals, even including the poorest members of society. The Keju system was eventually abolished under the Qing Dynasty in 1905. For 1,300 years, it had served as the basis for selecting civil officials. But what about the military? You may ask. Was there a similar system for selecting army officers? As it happens, at the time of the Tang Dynasty, which followed Sui, the Empress Wu Zetian established an imperial system for this very purpose. At an army drilling ground in the city of Chang'an, the capital of the Tang Dynasty, one day in the year AD 702, an examination was in progress. A large number of kung fu practitioners from all parts of the country had gathered to compete for the chance to become army officers in what was the first ever such event in the history of China. The top-level examination was being held by the Ministry of the Military. And the Empress Wu Zetian herself would be coming to watch the finals and present the award to the first place getter. But this was the first time army officers were being selected on the basis of an examination. So how had officers been selected in the dynasties before Tang, and how were Kung Fu practitioners able to rise through the social order in those times? In previous dynasties, the only way a kung fu practitioner could climb the social ladder was by proving himself on the battlefield. One example was Xu Renggui, who rose to the rank of general in the early years of the Tang Dynasty. Xu Renggui came from a very poor family, but he was possessed of unusual physical strength. If it had not been for his outstanding performance in the Tang Army during its eastbound punitive expedition, he would very likely have ended up a kung fu street performer for the rest of his days. 唐太宗征高丽的时候，他就是应募参军，在一个叫做张士贵的将军底下，呃，去辽东打仗。就在辽东，就是就是凭着自己非常勇敢，一马当先，能冲在前头。An old Chinese saying goes, "Great skill engenders bravery," and it seems Xu Renggui was a good example of this. Deliberately clad in white armor that made him highly conspicuous on a battlefield and drew the attention of the enemy. She was clearly enjoyed fighting. That Tang Taizong, 刚好登高望远，就一下子就看到这个人了。征高丽的这个战役打完了之后，回来了，他就立刻得到了一个非常高的官品的这样的一个职位。In peacetime, however, Kung Fu practitioners had little chance to prove themselves militarily. But the royal examination established by Empress Wu Zetian for the selection of army officers was to open the door to them as never before. The counterpart of the new military examination, the royal examination for potential civil officials, had been established during the Sui Dynasty, the dynasty preceding Tang. But why did Empress Wu Zetian, the first female monarch in Chinese history, establish this examination to select army officers? The year before the royal examination to select army officers was introduced, Wu Zetian had seized power from the Li family, in doing so, becoming the ruler of Tang. But she was naturally concerned about antagonism from existing ministers and army generals. At that time, the army was still largely in the hands of supporters of the Li family she had overthrown, 
and some of them had begun to demonstrate their opposition through military action. To consolidate her power and to eradicate once and for all the remaining strength of the Li family, the Empress was anxious to have her own people in the army. She it was this aim that resulted in the appearance of China's first royal examination to select army officers. However, even though Wu Zetian repeatedly stressed that anyone could become a candidate, in reality, not everyone qualified. Every applicant had to submit detailed personal information which included the name of his hometown, his father's name, his grandfather's name, marital status, physical appearance, and whether he had ever committed a felony. Before the examination took place, the civil ministry spared no effort in checking the information collected in order to vet the candidates. This was a military examination, but exactly what subjects were tested. According to historical records, the Tang examination covered a wide range of military skills. These included archery on horseback, archery on foot, lancing on horseback, weightlifting and, as unnecessary as it may seem, physical appearance. Naturally, being able to perform well as an archer in a variety of conditions was regarded as essential. Weightlifting was obviously meant to test a candidate's physical strength, while in reality, physical appearance referred to a candidate's height, preferably more than 180 centimetres. If a candidate was shorter than that, he was unlikely to pass the exam. Among the subjects tested, excellence in archery and superior physical strength came at the top, and these two criteria were to exert a strong influence on writers of later generations. For instance, all the characters and stories of the Tang Dynasty are described as having unusual physical strength, an essential requirement. Strong muscles became a phrase used to describe any hero, and most often he would be a practitioner of Kung Fu. Archery, weightlifting and physique, it can't have been easy to excel in all these tests. But some candidates did make it through the preliminary, secondary and final phases of the imperial military examination. And then, what honour awaited them? According to the rules, those coming first and second in the Kung Fu competition were to receive positions in the army up to rank 5. The much lower rank 9 positions were given to scholars who did well in the royal examinations to select civil officials. From this, we can see that the Empress regarded candidates who succeeded in the Kung Fu part of the examination as more important. The examination initiated by Wu Zetian opened a door for Kung Fu practitioners to secure officialdom and serve their country. However, from the very beginning, it was a highly controversial practice. Through the examination, Wu Zetian managed, as she had always intended, to gather around her a group of loyal army officers. However, many questioned the way the examination was conducted. It examined Kung Fu skills only. No other knowledge, such as military strategy, was tested at all. 
。武则天的时候，有一个谏官薛谦光曾经上书，反对那种单纯以武艺来选拔将帅的方针。那么他提出了一个新的概念，就是谋将的概念。这种将帅，他可能。并不通晓武艺，那么也不能打仗，很可能是个文弱书生。但是呢，他却有运运筹帷幄的本事，他能够决胜于千里之外，能够从战略的高度上把握战争的艺术，呃，来指挥作战。呃，薛谦光给武则天举了一个例子，就是说赵云，不管赵云有多神勇，那么他还需要诸葛亮来运筹帷幄，才能够打胜仗。However, Xu Qianguang had failed to understand Wu Zetian's real purpose, namely to build up her own military strength to protect her Dazhou dynasty, and so the Empress ignored his advice. The era of utilizing royal examinations to select army officers through testing Kung Fu skills had begun. But while it would continue in the dynasties to follow, it would not remain the same. During the Song Dynasty, the dynasty immediately after Tang, the royal military examination continued. But any Kung Fu practitioner who entered the examination was certain to fail, as the content of the examination had changed almost completely.到了宋朝的武举当中，我们就看到军事理论修养的呃成分被大大的强调了。宋朝的武举不错，它也考骑马，也考射箭。但是呢，在骑马射箭之外，它增加了兵书大义和策论的考试。兵书大义呢，就是
and so they make positions in the army inheritable. The Yuan dynasty restricted weapons to the point where only one knife was permitted among several Han households for cooking purposes. The possession of arms was strictly forbidden, and no Han people were allowed to learn Kung Fu. There was no need for an examination. When Zhu Yuanzhang established the Ming Dynasty, the dynasty that succeeded the Yuan Dynasty in the year 1368, he brought back many of the practices of the earlier Song Dynasty. One of his ministers suggested that because the country had only just been founded and the society was not yet completely stable, the regime was in urgent need of a large number of army officers. In order to satisfy this need, why not, he argued, resume the Song practice of selecting officers through a royal examination. Upon hearing this, however, Zhu Yuanzhang made no comment. Zhu Yuanzhang and many kings are the same. He can be the same as you, but he cannot be the same as you. When he is the king of the king, he will consider his king to be able to live for a long time. 凡是能够有可能涉及到他这个统治，甚至他的儿子、孙子统治的人，他都得要考虑，要采取措施。这就是我们大家都所熟知的，就是为什么朱元璋在做了皇帝之后，他会杀戮了那么多的功臣。那这种惧怕无人的心理，使得朱元璋迟迟不愿意。设立武举，甚至在有人提出设立的时候，还更有严厉的处置。It was not until 80 years later, and then only after persuasion by many ministers, that an emperor finally resumed the royal examination for army officers. However, unwilling to break from the rule set by Zhu Yuanzhang, Emperor Yingzong never went so far as to hold the final competition inside the palace. That's why, during the 300 years of the Ming Dynasty, no first place was ever awarded in the examination. This situation lasted until the dynasty was seriously threatened by repeated peasant uprisings during the reign of its last emperor, Chongzhen. Just 13 years before the downfall of the Ming dynasty, Emperor Chongzhen held the first final of the examination inside his palace. First place that day went to a Kung Fu master named Wang Lai Pin, who was immediately appointed to the position of army general. But the fate of Ming was sealed, and despite his loyalty, bravery and mastery of Kung Fu, three years later, in a battle to take the city of Dangzhou, which had fallen to a peasant army, Wang Lai Ping died. Next came the Qing Dynasty, with its powerful Manchu cavalry that swept across the country like a storm. The first few Qing emperors valued fighting skills just as much as their ancestors had done. Initially, at least the imperial examination for selecting army officers was continued in much the same way as during previous dynasties. But the rulers of Qian quickly discovered that the examination for selecting army officers, a practice they had inherited from the previous dynasty, had its major defects. 一六九三年，康熙皇帝在翻阅武举会试录的时候，发现了一个现象，那就是取中的武进士当中，大半都是江浙人，而山西和河南两个省呢，每省只有一个人。这个原因其实很简单，因为当时武举的录取是以文章来决定录不录的。康熙皇帝觉得这个完全没有道理，因为武举选的是武官，是要能指挥打仗的，文章做得好不好，根本就无关紧要。那么，因此他强调，以后的武举一定要重视弓马技咏的考试。
With that, the Qing dynasty changed a major aspect of the examination system inherited from the Ming dynasty. Candidates no longer had to face an academic threshold. Anyone could enter. A candidate passing the district level examination acquired the title Marshal Xiaotai, the lowest rank. If he passed the examination at provincial level, he was called Marshal Turen and qualified to sit the examination to be held inside the capital. The final test, usually limited to a very small number of candidates, was held before the throne. The first, second and third place getters at this examination were respectively called Marshal Zhuangyuan, Marshal Bang Yan and Marshal Tan Hua. Emperor Kangxi laid great store by martial arts skills and later generations followed suit. Once again, martial arts skills had become the number one criterion and more often than not, the only criterion used to determine a winner or loser. In effect, the nature of the system had reverted to the way it had been when first introduced a thousand years before. But in spite of this defect, the examination system produced a great number of people able to fill lower and middle positions in the Qing army. According to statistics, by the end of the 18th century, 13% of Qing army officers had been selected from among successful candidates in the military examination. This system continued throughout the entire history of the Qing dynasty. However, after the Opium War, which took place in 1840, and further wars with foreign powers armed with gunboats and firearms, the system proved to be less and less adequate. A greater disparity was seen between military qualities and thinking, as the system still looked upon horse riding and archery as the number one criteria. This was an outlook on military affairs passed down from centuries before, but had not kept pace with the changing times. Among the successful candidates in the late Qing period was Ge Yuanfei, a tragically fated hero. Dinghai Zong Bing Ge Yuanfei, 那么他是一八二三年的武进士，考中了之后，当时授官就是总兵，这个级别已经相当的不低了。那么到了一八三一年的时候，他就已经能够做到了定海总兵这个职位。When the city of Dinghai was attacked by the British Army in 1841, Ge Yuanfei led his do-or-die soldiers in a battle that lasted six days and nights, and more than a thousand enemy soldiers were killed. However, it was a feat that changed nothing, as in the end, their spears and broadswords proved no match for British firearms, and Ge Yuanfei was killed. Eventually, but belatedly, it dawned on the Qing court that the old military examination system to select army officers was out of date and had to be terminated. In the Wu-Ke-Ju process, there was a very important role in the Wu-Ke-Ju. This is Rong Long. In 1895, which is the last year of the Wu-Ke-Ju, he had written a book. He said, the Wu-Ke-Ju was the Ban 无举考试也不能选拔出国家真正需要的人才所以他建议应该改革无举让这些无举人去学习现代军事技术把他们编制到军队里面去 The last old-style military examination was held three years later. Zhang Sanjia from Hunan province came first, winning the title Marshal Zhuangyuan. But like so many Marshal Zhuangyuan before him, he was unable to save the Qing dynasty.
In 1901, the Qing government put an end to the system of military examinations. Thus, the army effectively closed off a route by which for 1,200 years, martial arts practitioners had become military officers. In a sense, the decision was highly symbolic. Henceforth, Kung Fu would be regarded more as a sport than as an effective form of combat. It is as a sport that Kung Fu has enjoyed its greatest popularity in China and around the world. Thank you for sitting with us on today's New Frontiers. I'm Qi Xiaojun from CCTV International. Bye for now.